Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk through how to create the main element of a scene something like this. The scene is inspired by a 19th century Russian painter called Ivan Ivazovsky. And here's an example of one of his paintings. I was particularly struck by how he created the effect of light being scattered just beneath the surface of the water in these waves. And you can see this is an effect he used quite a lot. So you can even see here where that barrel is floating. You can see it is just beneath the surface as well as above it. And there are almost shadows in the water, as well as the reflections and so on. Not so obvious in this painting, but it's still there. But this one I think is most striking. And I decided to try to recreate this effect. So this is my effort. And although there's a lot in the scene, it's actually more intense in terms of the work that Blender has to do than it is in terms of the complexity of the scene. This is by no means perfect. I'm sure that I could have adjusted it a bit more. Uh, the scale isn't quite perfect for the waves and so on. But you can see the general effect is there. I'm getting this sort of darkening of the light as you go deeper down this wave. And you can adjust exactly how extreme that change is. But I was particularly pleased with the light up here. There's a number of other effects in this scene, particularly to do with the foam on the water. And although it's not terribly obvious, there is atmospherics as well. What looks like clouds up here is actually a huge volumetric cube that is heterogeneous. In other words, there's noise in that cube where it has denser and less dense areas. And that gives this effect of a sort of foggy, misty surface just above the water and clouds in the sky that are somewhat obscured by this fog or mist. So I've covered that in quite a bit of detail in my Martian tutorial. And I'll put a link to that on the screen now, along with a link in the description. I'll also not be going into huge detail on the ocean modifier itself. I will show you the setup I used, but I do cover that in another tutorial. And again, I'll put a link to that on the screen now, along with a link in the description. The main thing I'm going to focus on is how I achieved this material effect on the sea. So one word of warning, this is all about volumetrics. So it's likely that this will drive your computer quite hard. Depending on how large your scene is, you may be able to get away with GPU computing. I did for a while, but eventually I had to switch to CPU compute because the load is pretty heavy. We'll go with GPU for now and see how we get on. So to begin with, I'm just going to add a plane. I'll scale it up a little bit. Then we'll go to modifiers, add a modifier, and you should have the ocean modifier. So just select that. If I come out of that camera view, you can see we've got the ocean modifier there. Now it's fairly subtle to begin with. So as I said, I've got another tutorial on how this all works, but essentially you need time here to change if you want the ocean itself to change, which you will want to because you'll want to find the shape that looks how you want it to look, the pattern of waves that work for you. Very quickly, if I set this to something like 50 frames, we don't need to have any more than that. I'm going to set the time to one at the beginning, press I while hovering over it to add a keyframe and go to the end of the animation and we'll set it to 10, which is fairly rapid and keyframe that. Now, when I press play, you can see that I've got an ocean moving. And if you really want to, depending if you want to do an animation or something, you may want to go to the graph editor and set the key interpolation to linear. So if we go back to the 3D view, and press play, you can see we've got a fairly rapidly moving ocean there. So now I'll quickly go through and put in the settings I used. The only thing I'm not going to set the same is this up here. What these repeats do is you can see they just extend your ocean one way or another. And that's up to you. I use two on each of these. So we'll need to put the resolution up. I actually use 27. You will find there is a limit beyond which your computer just won't have enough resources to do this. Size, I used 1.96. Spatial size, I set to 13. Depth, I kept at default. Random seed, you don't need to change. Choppiness, I set to 0.5. Scale to 1.6. Smallest waves to 0 0.005. And wind velocity to 60. I told it to generate foam with a coverage of 0.3. And call the foam itself a name. So call it something like that, foam. Tell it the end frame, and then this last little bit is just to get the foam, bake the ocean. And what that's doing is it's calculating where foam would appear on the ocean. So if we have a look at that now, it will take a lot longer to change because we've got such a high resolution. I'm going to turn that down in a moment, but you can see we've got a lot more going on there now. So I'm going to turn the resolution down to 
15 and rebake. And you can see that baked a lot quicker now. So once you've got a pattern that you're happy with, a distribution of waves that you like, you can move on. You will want some reasonably sharp waves. So obviously it, this will vary a bit depending on the scale for each model that you use. Alignment just changes how the waves move th through the scene. And I had mine just set to one. It just changes the angle of the waves. So I'm just going to very quickly now go to the world, set a background and then set that to sky. I'm going to move my camera up, back a little bit. And you notice because this is quite a large scene, things are clipping in the background. So in other words, I'm losing some of my scene. So I need to just, with the camera selected, go to the clipping plane and push that out. And obviously I'd have more waves further back. And I'm just rotating on the Z axis just to get a reasonable amount of wave in the scene. So if I go to rendered view now, we can't see very much because I haven't got an actual sun. And I'm just going to move my little ball here, which controls the sky, to a point where the sun is sort of over here somewhere because I want the light to really be behind the wave to a large extent. And now I'm just going to add a lamp, which will be a sun lamp, and calling my camera up so I can see where it is, I'm going to point the sun, scale it up so I can see it, somewhat at the camera and just put it over here where it's out the way. So we'll probably need to adjust that. I'll give it a slightly yellow color and set it at three to begin with. And the size we want down a bit, we'll go for 0.05 for now. And let's have a look at what that's doing. Obviously the ocean is just a an opaque surface at the moment. And that's about the settings that I used before. It's always worth bringing up another window and just looking at what you're doing as you go. So you can see there the angle of it's just picking up the surface and reflecting here, which is pretty reasonable. So we'll go with that for now. And now we need to start to work on the texture for C. So we're going to start building up the textures down here now. And to begin with, I'm just going to add a very simple set of nodes. So come over here, we'll just say new for the material. And this is now our ocean material. So I'm going to go with a white diffuse, the default to start with. I'm going to add a mix shader. And I'll explain these as I go along. And I'm going to add a glossy shader. Set it to my preferred method and put that in here. We'll set this to about 0 0.025 and we'll set the roughness down to 0 0.05. It's quite shiny. You may want to go even higher than that, 0 0.025, something like that, because obviously it is water. So we're starting to get something a little more wet looking now. But now we need to start to make it have some transparency to it. So I'm going to take that mix shade in, Shift E to duplicate it. Put that up here. I'm going to put that surface on the bottom and I'm going to add another glossy, another mix shader, and I'm going to add a transparent shader. Make sure the transparent's on full white. I put my glossy and my transparent into here and then the output of that mix shader goes into the other side of this one. Now there's a bit more to do with this one at the moment. And what that will do is if I move this mix all the way to the right, you can see that I can barely see the surface because the whole thing has become transparent. All the way to the left, I've got this glossy getting mixed in with this glossy and this diffuse. So it's just a very shiny surface. So I need to do something with this mix factor. So I'm going to add an input, which is layer weight. So layer weight looks at the angle that the light has bounced into the camera. I'm going to take the facing output and put that into the mix. I'm going to set this to 0.885. Zoom in so you can see a bit better. 0.885. And then I'm going to add a converter, which is a color ramp, and just drop that in there. Set this to B-spline and set the first pointer almost to the top, which is position 0.991. Those particular settings is what I used. And you can see we're starting to get something a little bit different. We're not there yet, but basically we've got areas where you can see through it, which is basically here where we're seeing the other edge of the water. And that won't be a problem in a moment. And areas where it's just reflective. And I have the roughness a little bit lower on this one as well. So I'll go for 0 0.01. So that's quite an interesting effect. We can scroll around a little bit and have a look at what that's looking like. But obviously there's a lot more to do yet. So I decided to alter the scale of my image because I found a slight problem with the way I've done this tutorial so far. And that is that I scaled up my initial plane quite a bit. Now, in actual fact, you need the scale, not necessarily the dimensions, to be one to one. So you can do that by just control A and applying scale. Once you do that, you'll probably find it'll change size a little bit and you'll certainly 
generally find the whole thing were probably a bit smaller if you scaled it up. And you notice we've got a lot more detail in it now. It's moving it around a little bit there. If we now adjust the mix factor between our transparent and glossy, which is what this affects, so this is the layer weight one, we can now start to get slightly nicer looking water. And in addition, we'll find that the next step will now work properly. So what we now need to do is add one more node. If you don't apply the scale before you do this next part, you will find it just doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. So we're going to add another shader, which is a volume scatter node. Again, remember to apply the scale before you do this. Take the volume and output of the volume scatter node into the volume input of the material node. Now you can see it's changed a bit and you, if you look carefully you can see we're actually starting to get the effect I was looking for. Now it's not as visible as I'd like it and that's down to the opacity as it were of the waves. So we need to play around with this a little bit so that we can start to see light shining through. See if we go too far we actually lose the surface of the water and we've got the the fog as it were beneath the surface. So we need to find something that works for us. So we've got a little bit of shininess. So now you should be able to see we've got a surface that's represented there as well as light shining through. But it's a bit of a strange color at the moment. Now the funny thing about volume scatter is that you need to set a complementary color to achieve the color you're looking for. So I was going for a sort of greeny blue color. So if we look on the color wheel, if I want this sort of color, I need to go for this sort of color in terms of the volume scatter setting. If I just click green, you notice I've now got a purple ocean with green highlights. Or if I click blue, a yellow ocean. In fact, it's the contrasting color. So if I go for something around here, this sort of reddish pinky color, now we're starting to get the sort of color I want. The surface isn't quite right and we need to play around with the settings a little bit, but we're starting to get there. So we can play around here, we can change the opacity and so on. You can see that cuts out the subsurface scattering as it is. And again, you could probably do this effect with the subsurface scattering node, but I found this to be quite an effective way to do it. Because you're just mixing between these two effects. And you can play with the blend effect as well, of course. I found this to be quite a sensitive setting. And the exact colors you see on here will, will depend, of course, on what you set here. So I'll set a slightly lighter color and you can already see that we're starting to get that effect of light shining through. And then if I put an isotropy up, 0.5, you can see that's lightened the surface up quite a lot. And what that sort of does is it allows more light to pass through in a particular direction, in this case towards the camera, than it does in other directions. It also depends on what direction the light is coming from. So if we try minus 0.5, you'll need to experiment because it will vary depending on where your light source is and where your camera is. You can see that sort of really picking up the highlights on the water, although it's a little strange. I've experimented and you just need to find what looks right for your scene. And for this particular scene, I think point one is probably not far off. So you've got a sort of milkiness to the surface of the water there and you've got light shining through the water here. And you can see how some of the water off in the distance is actually quite dark. So then there's a few other settings that you may need to adjust. Under the render settings, you may need to play around with the volume settings here, which is basically how much light bounces around. So I used a setting of three and you can see that's brightening it up and altering the general look of it. So we can play around with this again to get what we're looking for. In addition, you can play with these settings. The default is 0.1 and 1024. So this is effectively the quality of the volume sampling. You don't necessarily need a very high quality and the smaller this number, the longer it will take to calculate. So you can put this down and I set mine to 0.2 and 512. And then under the material itself, we're not having any variation in the density. We're having variation in the shape, but not the density. So we can click homogenous here, which again allows Blender to save some time in how it calculates the volumetrics. So essentially that's all there is to creating the sort of effect that I used. I obviously added some compositing as well, just to increase the intensity of some of the colors. I also added some displacement on the surface of the water. So that was just a simple noise texture dropped into here, add in a math node, set to about 0.2, and then the scale, something like 350, and I set the detail to 32, and set this to multiply. And that just gives you some extra fine detail on the surface of the ocean. 
if I let this render a little bit longer now, you'll be able to see what's going on on there. So as you see, we're getting the light shining through here and it gets darker as it goes down. And you can emphasize that by increasing the gamma on the scene. So there's a quick render. It still needs a lot of tweaking. It's got no foam on it at the moment, but you can see that it's starting to get an interesting effect. You're starting to get this light shining through. It's a little pinky at the top and you can adjust that, but you can see how particularly in this wave that's further away, how you start to really see what's going on behind it. And the anisotropic will also affect how much of that pink shows through as well. So just to go through the settings for the material, they're pretty straightforward, but will need a lot of tweaking because they will vary with everything you change in the scene pretty much. You need to use a layer weight node. You can either use Fresnel or facing. When I first set this up during the tutorial, I used Fresnel. If you use facing, you'll need to swap the black and the white on the color ramp as I've done now. That's just what I used on the original one, but you see I've got it set to B spline, but they're very close together. But obviously you can vary these. You need a glossy and a transparent. I've got the glossy set to a roughness of 0 0.01. Somewhere around there should be right. And the layer weight and color ramp controls the factor between those two. That then goes into the surface. And I also have a displacement controlled from a noise texture with a scale of 350 and a detail of 32 through a multiply node of 0.2, just to scale the size of it down a little bit. And that just gives you sort of minute variations in the surface, which you can sort of see here. And then finally, the big secret, a volume scatter node set to a contrasting color to the one you want. So this sort of pinky color, which is the opposite of this sort of green color, set the density to one and the anisotropy greater than zero, but not one. And then that goes into the volume scatter node. And remembering that you must apply the scale, control A to apply the scale to your plane. Otherwise, this node doesn't seem to work. It's just a little bit of an oddity that you need to do that. And then the rest of it is really just tweaking settings. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, let me know. There are links on the screen now on all the details of the ocean modifier. And that will go into the detail of how you create the foam. There is also a link on the screen for my Martian tutorial, part of which talks about the atmospherics, so how to create that sort of foggy, misty effect in the air. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, let me know. If you enjoy these tutorials, don't forget to click like and subscribe. I also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account, and I now have a Patreon page as well. And I'll provide links to all of those in the description below. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot.